You know, when you learn the secrets to hitting your irons flush, it becomes really easy. You look forward to hitting that mid iron out of the fairway because you know you're going to hit a good one and most of your playing partners are going to struggle hitting those shots. Now I've put together three of my all time best videos that are going to share with you some of those real secrets to hitting crisp irons. Let's go ahead and get started. Now most players I see tend to stand up and kind of flip at the ball like this. It causes two very big problems. Number one is I stand up and throw I'm getting farther away from this golf ball. I also tend to lean back a little bit. It causes a huge contact problem. You see, it's gonna want me to almost hit behind the golf ball a little bit. And if I happen to not hit behind where I'm kind of throwing the club at the ball, I don't have very much forward shaft lean. And when I don't have very much forward lean, the leading edge of the club starts to come up off the ground. So I'm gonna hit everything thin. So it's basically this endless battle of hitting thin shots and heavy shots, thin shots and heavy shots. And it has nothing to do with where you're hitting the ground. It has more to do with how you're moving your body. So what I wanna do is I wanna make sure that I go ahead and get actually closer to the ground, cover the golf ball, and then stay in my posture. Now there's a great way to do this, and I call it the stable fluid spine. So what I'm doing here, and I'm gonna give you a great way to measure this actually too. So I'm gonna start off with one of these belt loop, these uh, sticks through my belt loops. As I set up at a dress, I actually want to be tilted slightly away from the target. So if I take this other stick, kind of have it representing my spine angle, I'm going to go ahead and bump my hips forward and tilt my shoulders back a little bit until I'm in what's good posture, what most pro or what all pros would be doing as they set up pretty much. Now from there, I'm slightly behind the golf ball here. That makes it easier for me to come through this shot from the inside, stay down, clear out of the way, just like you're seeing with those pros. If I'm very vertical, now all of a sudden I want to kind of stand up and throw. If I get tilted, I can get opening and I can release that club out in front. Now that's one way to check that. I'm going to put this club straight up and down to this alignment stick. I'm going to tilt my body until that club hits the inside of my left leg. I should feel a little bit more weight on my right side getting it there very early. The second piece here is when I come to contact, if I'm standing up early, I'm going to do this and you're gonna see my club on my shoulders is already starting to wanna to hit this bottom stick when, the, when they're way back here. They're almost still pointing toward that camera back there. They're gonna to wanna to hit each other. If I do this properly and I stay in my posture, my shoulder stick isn't gonna catch up to my hip stick until up here. And I'm gonna be having these sticks almost point toward the golf ball this direction toward this camera before the, the shoulder stick actually hits the hip stick. If I do that, then I'm in a great position. I can hit some really, really solid golf shots. So that's piece number one. You really have to be having your shoulders and your body work properly. Let me do that same thing here, and I'll just go ahead and hit one. You'll see how my divot's gonna be nice and clean, and I'm not gonna hit way behind this golf ball because my hips and body are working properly. A Little bit of tilt at a dress, and then from there, I'm gonna feel like my body stays down and my hips stay in their posture as I come, or my shoulders stay in their posture as I come through contact. Let's try that out. There we go, nice and solid. And there, even though I didn't catch as much turf as I'd like, I'd like to hit a little bit more on there because I had good shaft lean because I stayed in my posture, that was still a really nice solid shot even though it was slightly thin. If I would have been standing up out of my posture, that ball would have gone 20 yards shorter. I really would have been, you know, not very good solid strike. So even on your miss hits, these are gonna be better, which is kind of the whole point of this. When you hit a bad shot, it's still pretty good. So let's go ahead and try one more here. Get a little tilt, stay in my posture all the way through contact. There we go, nice and solid there. And again, just a slight divot. It's a little fluffy ground, so you're not gonna take a big divot here. And nice and solid. Now, once we're doing that, let's go ahead and add a little power to it. I'm gonna take that stick again, and all I wanna do is put it across my shoulders, and I wanna make sure in my backswing, I loosen my legs up a little bit so that I can get a good full turn. And now I'm gonna get this stick behind the golf ball in my backswing. If I flip it over the other way, I'm gonna get it all the way down the fairway or as far down the fairway, again, loosen my feet up, let them rotate as I can in the follow through. Once I do that, I'm gonna start having some more power with this. So number one, stay in my posture so I can hit it solid. Number two, let's get loaded up well 
so that we can have some good speed and some good power as we're hitting these shots. Let's go ahead and give that a whirl. There we go, nice and solid. Pretty long shot with an iron. I got a seven iron here. That's probably going somewhere around 185 today and nice and solid because I'm winding up uh, pretty well there. Now the third piece is lag. Here's a great drill for having lag. And these, these five pieces I'm going over, these five fundamentals, are the five fundamentals of the top speed golf system. This is what I base all my methodology, my teaching methodology off of. And this is what makes playing golf really easy. You don't have to worry about a hundred things. Get these five things right, and you're gonna have a great time on the golf course. You're gonna hit some great shots. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and hold this stick down here like this in a backwards position. And what I wanna feel like I'm doing is if I had my golf club, I'd be holding it like this, going out of that end of the golf club. In my downswing, again, I wanna get this as close to the ground as I can, and I wanna feel like my hands get as low as possible, and this is still pointing behind the golf ball. Once I get to the golf ball, tons of lag, I go ahead and release it as fast as I can. So I'm gonna feel that same thing without a club a few swings. So I'm gonna hold it like this. I'm gonna feel like my hands get close to the ground. That stays behind the golf ball. Tracing down that target line if we're looking down the line view. And then from there, once it gets to the golf ball, I go ahead and smack myself in the side as quickly as I can. Don't do it too hard. You could hurt your ribs there a little bit. But you just wanna go ahead and do that really fast. Now that lag, the reason that lag is so important is because I'm saving that hit until late in the swing. I'm saving up all that potential energy until late in the swing and then bam, I'm letting it go. I'm getting all that speed at contact instead of casting back up here, letting that club release and then having nothing left for the hit down at the bottom. So I'm gonna feel like I'm getting that stick behind the golf ball and then I'm not gonna release that until the last second. Then I'm really gonna let it fly. There we go. Add a little speed to that one. That one went a long way. Had a nice sound to it. As I started to ramp up the speed, it starts feeling even better. Now the fourth piece is what I call the straight line release. And that ties in exactly with what we just talked about. So even if you have all the lag in the world, it's not gonna do you any good if I don't get rid of it. So the lag creates speed because it saves up this big angle in the downswing, and then you release that through contact. If I was to grab my club kind of halfway up the shaft, as I start to come down, that should be leading in front of my hands again, just like that stick pointing behind the golf ball. And then I'm gonna release that, and it's only gonna split my forearms for the very first time up here past contact. Now you can see how it's splitting my forearms. That's exactly how I want it to happen in the golf swing. So I'm, I'm opening my body. One of the reasons that we tilted back like that was this reason. I'm opening my body and I'm, lift, I'm releasing that club out in front toward the target. So let's go ahead and try that out here. I'm gonna feel like I really let that club release out in front. I could even put a golf ball about four to five feet in front of my golf ball that I'm hitting down the target line. And I'm gonna feel like I release my club toward that golf ball. So let's go ahead and try that out. So I'm not releasing it at my ball I'm hitting, I'm releasing it up here toward the ball that's out in front. There we go, dead straight, really nicely hit shot. Doing my practice, my fundamentals, just like everybody else. Now that was your four pieces. There's a fifth piece though that's extremely important. This has to do with your weight shift and how you can get the contact point correct at the bottom of the swing. See, there's two different types of players that struggle with solid contact. Player number one tends to fall back. So the momentum of the body is falling back this way in the downswing. They barely miss out from grounding out back here and kind of flip to, to barely hit that ball a little bit thin. That's gonna cause a lot of chunks and thin shots. Now, player number two that struggles with ground contact actually does the opposite of that a little bit. They get too far in front. This left shoulder gets in front of their left ankle. So if I was to draw a line down from this, it's actually outside of my ankle. And I'm gonna chop down into the golf ball too much. That causes a lot of inconsistency too because this club's coming down on such a steep angle of attack, you have to just be really precise with it. So here's what I wanna feel. Number one, I wanna tilt like we talked about at address. That's gonna get me behind the golf ball slightly. 
Number two, now in my downswing, I'm gonna keep that slight tilt, but I'm gonna let my weight shift to my front side. So I'm on my front foot, but my upper body is leaning back. That's if you watch pro players, watch them at contact, every single one of them is tilted away from the target with their weight moving to the left. I call this the compression line, helps you compress the golf ball. So I wanna be angled back, but my weight is moving to the left. And if I drew a line from the center of my ankle, it would run up through the center of my hip and the center of my shoulder. And that would either be with a short iron right over top of my ankle or slightly behind it. It would never be in front of it and it would never be falling back this way. It's gonna be almost right over top of that ankle, but just slightly, slightly behind. And when I do that properly, that allows me to get a really clean strike time and time again. There we go, hit that one great. So it's that tilted away as you're coming through that allows you to tie that together and get that extreme consistency. And if you look at the pro players, like I said, look at every single one of them, they all look the same at contact. They're all tilted away like that. All right, I hit that one nice and solid. Really felt like I compressed it. But here's the part that most players, almost every single player gets wrong. You'll notice that when I took this divot, this is kind of a mid to longer iron. I didn't chop down into the golf ball. And a lot of times when we're trying to get that forward shaft lean, we're getting the hands in front of the club head, players mistake that for, I'm gonna hit down into the golf ball a lot. And actually when you do that, you lose a bit of that compression and you don't hit the ball quite as solid. Now you'll see this little nail or this giant, it's not very little, this giant nail I have into this golf ball. This is what I want you to visualize when you're hitting this shot. So let me walk you through how to hammer this nail and how that's gonna hit you to help you to hit the most crisp, solid iron shots of your life. Let's go and get started. All right, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna take a tee and I'm gonna tee this ball up just so you can see it a little bit better. I'm gonna tee this iron up. So I'm gonna hover this golf ball a little bit off the ground. Instead of this nail being dead level, I'm gonna tilt it down just slightly. That's gonna represent how much I'm hitting down into the golf ball. Now you'll notice when I do this, it's not very much. I'm only tilting, if this is level, I'm tilting how much I hit down by just a few degrees. Now this is where everybody gets goes wrong. They think about when they have that forward shaft lean and I'm, my hands are in front of the golf ball, that I'm hitting way down into the ball. I'm kind of pinching it against the ground. I'm gonna have this big divot. I'm really gonna chop down into it. That's not what's going on. In reality, what I'm doing is I'm hitting very slightly down through the golf ball and my hands are actually going from low to high so that I can brush pretty even with the ground and still take loft off. So let me walk you through exactly what that means, what you need to do to make that happen. So first let's talk about how much this should be angled down. Pros are hitting down between three degrees with their long irons and six degrees with their short irons. That's not very much. You think about a clock face here. If this is 12 o'clock, you look at 12.01 on the clock, just one minute past 12, or I should probably go this way. I'm, I'm looking in reverse here. One minute on a clock face, that's six degrees difference. So the difference between what pros are hitting down with their long irons and, their, and all the way down to their wedges where they're taking these big divots is only three degrees. It's half of one minute that they're hitting down into this golf ball. It's not much. So the only reason that your wedges take a big cut of the turf is because of that loft. When it hits the ball, it shoots the club down in the ground and it starts to actually kick up a little bit extra turf just because of that sharp leading edge. So it's not that we're trying to lead these hands forward and hit down into it. We're trying to lead these hands forward to take off loft and to come in fairly level. Let me go over exactly what that means. And then we're gonna talk about what the body needs to do to get there. Here's a little tool I'm gonna to put on my club face just to show you where the loft is pointing. Now, if I wanna get the most compression of this golf ball, what I'd love to do is hit down matching that nail and I'd love to take off as much loft as possible off this club to match the compression. So if I could get this club matching that nail, I'm gonna have the most compression possible. Now that's never gonna happen in a real swing, but that's what I wanna feel like. Here's another secret that players never get right when they're doing this. Your hands can actually never get in front of your belt buckle. So if I'm thinking about, okay, I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna push my hands in front of my body, that's never gonna work. As soon as you start opening up with speed, 
your hands are never gonna be able to race in front of your body enough to do that. What I have to do is I have to keep my hands at my belt buckle and I have to turn my belt buckle forward enough to where my hands can still lean in front. Now that looks like my hands are way up here in front, but in reality they're not. I'm gonna keep my club here the same relationship to my body. I'm gonna turn my body back square and that's where my hands are. This is forward shaft lean. This isn't forward shaft lean. I have to have my hands back here and the way that I get the, sh the shaft lean is I rotate my body into the shot. So now if I'm doing this correctly, I'm visualizing hitting down on this nail slightly and I'm visualizing the loft of my club also matching that nail. And that comes from taking my belt buckle from here to there at contact. That's where I need to be. So set up to the golf ball, rotate your belt buckle in front, rotate your hips in front, let this right heel come slightly off the ground, and that's gonna preset your hands in a position where you're really gonna compress the golf ball. This is where that should be if you're trying to feel that. So I'm gonna take my right hand, I'm gonna angle it back a little bit, so my knuckles toward my elbow. I'm gonna take my left hand, I'm gonna bow it a little bit, and I'm gonna put both of those hands kinda of in front of my right pant pocket, my right hip. Now as I rotate into contact, that's where you're really gonna compress it. So you're feeling like you're gonna hit down slightly on this golf ball, just a very slight amount. And I'm feeling like my body rotates open, my hands are in front of my right hip, and that's kind of the secret to making this happen. I'm trying to match the loft on this club or the face of this club, just as though I'm gonna hit flush with that nail head and I'm gonna drive that nail head slightly down and forward. If I'm doing this, I'm adding loft, I'm glancing across that nail head. I'm not delivering the compression into the golf ball. It's like a glancing blow versus a solid smack. So now let's take that same feeling and let's hit a golf ball. So here, I'm gonna feel like all the momentum of my body is transferring into this ball and I'm really compressing it. Now in a second, I'm gonna tell you the last piece of this. I've shared a lot of secrets here, but there's one more missing piece to really making this super intuitive and very easy to do. Oh man, I hit that one really good. All right, we're gonna talk about in this video the real keys to hitting the ball nice and solid. And many players go their entire life without realizing you know, how to read the divot properly or having a mat like this. It's called an AccuStrike mat that allows you to read your divot after you hit every shot and see if you're doing the real fundamentals of clean, crisp, well-compressed golf shots. So if you feel like very rarely, even when you hit one in the middle of the face, it just doesn't feel and sound like it is when you hear a really great player, a PJ Tour player hitting it, we're gonna talk about what you need to be looking at at contact to get that perfectly compressed golf ball. I can't wait to show you some of the secrets in this. Let's go and get started. All right, so I got Q here with me. He's manning the flight scope radar and he's gonna read some of the numbers um, when we're hitting these shots so we can verify what we're seeing on this mat with what the radar is telling us. So Q, let me hit a couple shots right. here and I may ask you, you know, time and time about a few of the numbers that are on the radar. So the number one thing here is where you're starting your divots. And when you're looking at this mat, if I come down, let me remove the golf ball from there real quick. If I come down and I hit this mat, you're gonna see that it leaves a mark. It leaves essentially what your divot would be when you're, when you're making a golf swing. Now, if I start it on this white dot and it goes in front of my ball like that, that would be a perfectly hit shot. So I'm coming down, I'm hitting the mat and the golf ball roughly at the same time, and then my divot is in front. That's gonna be that ball first contact. What most players don't, may not realize is that your club can come down and actually barely brush a little bit of the turf before you hit the golf ball. So if that divot on this mat starts somewhere like that, that's gonna be a pretty clean shot. And then all the way up to just barely in front of that white dot is gonna be a pretty clean shot too. So if you can have your club enter this mat in that zone, you're gonna be pretty daggone consistent. You're gonna have those clean hit golf shots. So let me go ahead and show you what that would look like. Hopefully show you what that would look like. And then I'm also gonna talk about what I would do if I miss hit some of these. So let me go ahead and make a normal swing here. We'll see what this looks like and I'll kind of analyze it for you so it's really easy to tell what's going on. So a little bit thin on that one. Not quite as much ground contact as I'd like to have. And you can see how it started to leave the divot up here, but this is just kind of roughing it up, right? So my divot almost started on the front end of that line that I talked about. 
that would be that little bit of a thin shot. If you're doing that, you have, might have a tendency to stand up a little bit out of your posture for your hips to go toward the golf ball and you stand up. If you feel like you're, you're, you start to hit too many thin shots, really feel like you stay in your posture, clear out of the way, and make sure you make that ground first contact and you hit down into the mat a little bit more. That's completely fine. This mat won't tear up or anything like that if you go ahead and hit down into it. Now, if I hit too far behind it, so if I hit this mat and my divot is back here somewhere behind my golf ball, then I know that I'm falling to the right most likely. So I could be falling back here like this. My right shoulder gets lower. I'm really, you know, getting my right side of my body too close to the ground. Well, what I would do to have the perfect contact and what the drill I would work on is I would get a mat like this or I would at least mark, if you don't have a mat like this, just grab a leaf or anything like that. Put a leaf where your golf ball is, make a swing and then see where your divot starts. It should be starting right around where that leaf is. So I wanna feel like I get to the top of my swing, my weight is shifting left, my weight gets on my left side, and then I go ahead and hit down and through this golf ball. Let's try to hit a nice clean one now and see what that looks like. All right, so I hit that one pretty good. Nice straight ball flight. I'm looking at my divot is barely starting. Let's clean that up, just barely behind that white dot. That's pretty daggone good. So Q, what were my numbers on this five iron? So at 97 miles per hour, 219 total distance. Okay, pretty solid there. So I hit that nice and clean. That's the first thing I'd work on. I'd say that's the number one fundamental that you can work on in golf in general, is being able to consistently hit the ground at the same spot every single time. If you also, if you don't have a mat there, you can grab a tee. I'll grab a tee out of my bag here. And I could work on just putting that tee in the ground and being able to clip that tee first every single time. That's another drill you could do if you don't have this mat. AccuStrike sent me this mat. I got a special link down below this video. If you use the code Clay Ballard Indoor or Clay Ballard Outdoor, whether you're getting the indoor or outdoor mat, you save a few bucks and I actually make a few bucks on that too. If you don't want to buy the mat, I'm not doing a big sales pitch here. It gives me a few dollars. It's not game changing. Don't have to buy the mat. Put the, the little leaf down there, hit the tee out of the ground. You don't have to have this mat to do the stuff we're talking about today. I just think it makes it a little bit easier. Now let's go ahead and talk about the second thing there. If I can get my ground contact really consistent, and you'll find most of that is to do with your weight shift, but if I can get that consistent, I'm well on my way to flushing some irons. The second thing is, am I hitting it off the heel or the toe? Most of the time I see players, again, get a little hips moving toward the golf ball, standing up out of it, and what does that do? That pushes the heel out toward the golf ball. If I do that on a swing, let's go ahead and see what that would look like. Yeah, so that one was a little bit off the heel, kind of blocked it out. And look at on this mat where my divot was. You can see that the outside of my divot is touching this line. The inside of my divot is away from that line. So if I put my club down there like that, that's going to be a heel shot. If I put a golf ball and show you the same thing, there's the golf ball. There's where my club contacted. You see that would be on the heel. If I'm on the toe, my divot would be more on this side. The cool thing about this mat is it'll show you that. You can see if you're hitting a little off the heel and toe. The cool, the, the interesting thing is, you know, I see players all the time that don't realize they're hitting it slightly on the heel or slightly on the toe. You can use a foot spray powder, you can use something like that, but nothing is as easy as just putting this golf ball on the mat and hitting it and seeing what happens. This time, I'm gonna get rid of that heel shot and I'm gonna bring it more toward the center of the face. I'm gonna feel like instead of my hips going this way toward the golf ball, I'm gonna feel like I let my hips clear back almost like there's a chair behind me and I'm gonna sit in that chair as I start to turn. A cool thing about this or an interesting way to do this drill, feel like the chair is almost at an angle. So I'm gonna, sit, I'm gonna have my hips opening up as I sit in that chair. I want my hips to be opening. I don't want my hips to stay square. I'm not gonna be able to get the swing speed I want. So you're sitting back in that chair and opening your hips at the same time. If I do that, I should be a lot more centered contact. There we go, and that was a nice solid one. That one was right on the golf ball where my divot started. You'll see that the outside and the inside of that divot are pretty equal. That would be a nice solid strike on this mat again. Finally, and the coolest thing about this is that it shows you so much, you can even do the path that you're swinging. So if I'm swinging a little bit to the right, that's gonna look like that. If I'm swinging a little bit to the left, 
it's going to obviously show me and the divot's going to be that way. So I can even work on my fades and draws when I'm working with this. You can do the same thing if you don't have this mat. If I just go ahead and put a club down where my target is. So if I put a club down going toward my target, I step back and I look at my divots and I read those. Are they going to the left? Are they going to the right? Ideally, we'd want those divots pretty straight. Doesn't have to be perfect, but fairly straight in there. Lastly, let me go over the most common thing with that. I see a lot of times players are struggling to hit a draw. If I'm gonna hit a draw, I'm gonna focus on a few things. Number one, I'm gonna set up a little bit to the right. So my stance is a little to the right. Number two, I'm gonna get a little more tilt with my upper body. And number three, I'm gonna feel like I really let this face roll on over. So if I had this club face, I'm gonna let it roll over this way. I don't wanna hold it open or I'm gonna fade it. I wanna really let that go. So if I do this correctly, I should have a nice center strike mat or divot on the mat, and it should be going slightly to the right, showing that draw. So let's go ahead and make a swing on it here again, playing a little bit of a draw. All right, so there we go, nice draw. And that one was really well hit there. So when I'm looking on this mat, I can see the angle of my club is slightly inside out. Doesn't have to be a ton, just a little bit inside out like that is completely fine. So Q, what are you seeing on the path for this one here where I played a little bit more of a draw swing? Yeah, so your path was 7.7 .7 to the right, which would be in to out. Yeah, so a little bit in to out. So if I see this slightly tilted to the right, it's gonna be more of a draw type swing. And you can see that from the mat. If I was gonna fade one, when I swung, it would be going a little bit more to the left like that. So with your ground contact, with your center centeredness of strike on the face, or your path, you can test all those with the mat, or just really pay attention to your divots. As long as you're hitting a divot, you're gonna be able to read these same things. This just makes it a little clearer, a little bit more easy to read. Now to get that good, clean contact the same spot every single time, it helps to have your head be pretty stable and your spine be pretty stable. I call this the stable and fluid spine in my top speed golf system. What that means is, as I set up, as I rotate to the top, as I come back down to impact, notice how I'm just rotating around my spine and my upper body. That's gonna allow me to be much more consistent. I'm gonna play one of my best stable fluid spine videos for you here in a second to preview that video. All you need to do to click that is to click the card that pops up on the screen or the link down below in the description. You'll get instant access to that and that can really help you to get this divot starting at the same spot every single time. Best of luck, I can't wait to share some of the secrets to consistent contact with you. That allows us to have consistency in the golf swing. And what is it that allows that consistency to fall apart and create some bad rounds? That's what we're gonna talk about in this video today. Let's go ahead and get started. Everything that's, that happens in the golf swing is initially dictated by what happens with the spine. So if we're looking at a skeleton, you know, my spine's in the center of my body and everything else in my body is attached to my spine. So my shoulders are attached to my spine, my arms are attached to my shoulders, and then my arms are gonna be actually swinging the club. Now when I see players that are really struggling, those guys that are hitting it out in the woods right, they're hitting in the left, then they have a few good holes, what's happening is their spine angle is changing. As they go to the top of the swing, maybe they have a reverse pivot, spine's angled back, falling back to the right, but there's a lot of inconsistency in that. And what happens is, as good athletes as we all are, the number one fundamental in golf, correct, keep it nice and stable, but fluid, we're gonna be able to hit those good, clean shots time and time again. And that's what I'm gonna show you in this series of videos. Henrik Stenson, top five in both driving distance and accuracy. Roy McIlroy here, playing some of the best golf that anybody's ever played. And you can see just how stable.